All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about the range of a matrix. And so right now on screen, you can see the definition of the range of a matrix. And so it's the set of all vectors y, where y can be written as a times x for some vector x. And since we know that when we take a times x, you know, matrix vector multiplication on the right, that's going to be a manipulation of the columns of a, we could look at the range of a as all possible combinations of the columns. Okay, and you know we'll talk about span in the next video, and, and that'll be great. But uh, for now, let's talk about all possible combinations. I'll show you how we'll compute that. So we're going to do a couple of examples real quick. Okay, so for the first one, I've got this relatively simple matrix M, which is 1, 2, and 2, 4. Okay, and so you should be looking at this and see, okay, well, this is clearly a singular matrix. Um, its columns are linearly dependent. Um, and if we think about all possible combinations of the columns of A, well, we should get a vector where the second component is twice the first component. And all possible combinations of the columns of A, well, that'll be giving me, you know, two-dimensional vectors back. You know, vectors with two components, right? And so what we're going to do is we're trying to solve this system, y equals ax. We're going to use to ax equals b, but it's the same thing, right? What we're going to do is augment a with y and row reduce. But if this is a true equation for some actual value x, we just need to make sure that we have a consistent system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to augment m with, you know, some arbitrary vector y. Or you might see sometimes I do uh, b. Okay, so it doesn't really matter, it's letters. So that's going to be 1, 2, 2, 4. And we're going to augment with y1 and y2 and row reduce and make sure we don't have no solution. To subtract two copies of the first row from the second row and I'll get okay zero and zero but over here I took y2 and I subtracted two of y1 okay, now at this point I'm gonna say all right well the range of m is the, all of the y vectors that can actually be written as a times x for some x this range really does work the same way as like the range of a function in an algebra class so if we're going to have not, or if we're not going to have no solution, if it's not going to be inconsistent, if this system is going to be consistent, we need y2 minus 2y1 to equal 0. Okay. But that was kind of what I was saying at the beginning with the idea that, uh, oh, well, the second component just needs to equal twice the first component if we're going to combine the columns of A. And that's what we're seeing right here. Um, y2 would equal 2 of y1. Okay, now you could write it like that. Um, there's all sorts of ways we can write our range. I'm just going to say the range of m is the set of all y vectors in R2 such that y2 is equal to 2 times y1. And for another example, I've got this matrix M, which is again relatively simple, but this is a wide one, and we're going to be interested in finding the range of M. And once again, I'll just to set our expectations, we're thinking about the possible combinations of the columns of M. So that's going to be vectors with two components, right? These columns, they all have two components in them. So if I, you know, combine them, I should get a, co a column with two components. So I'm going to augment M with Y and row reduce. So if I'm going to find the range, so I'm going to one, zero, zero, one, 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 y1, and y2. And it's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? This matrix is already in reduced row echelon form. And so I, I was thinking about saving this to be the last example, but I think it's really important that we just go ahead and see it, you know, immediately. Um, what we did in the last one was we set the row of all zeros, the thing on the right side of the bar, to equal zero because we wanted to make sure we didn't have an inconsistent system. We want to make sure that m times x equals y uh, for this y1 and y2. Well, this is always going to be consistent. In fact, there's always going to be infinitely many solutions. Okay? So I can say for any y1 and y2, I'll be able to find an x where mx equals y1 and y2. So I'm going to say that the range of m is all of r2. But I know that this situation is kind of one that for first-time linear algebra students can be a little bit confusing. 
using. So I'm going to go in and give a little bit more detail and say, like, okay, well, what is this matrix actually telling us here? Okay, it's, well, to me, it's telling me that for any y1 and y2, I can backtrack to find an x so that mx equals y1 and y2. But uh, for you all, I'm saying, suppose we had 9 and 40. What I'm proposing is that these numbers in here are somehow giving us the instructions for how to find the x that will give us 9 and 40, or one of the many x's that will give us that. Okay, so that means y1 is 9 and y2 is 40. And if we look at the first line of the reduced row echelon form, that's saying x1 plus x3 needs to equal y1, which is going to be 9. And then x2 plus x3 is going to equal 40. Okay, so what I'm thinking is x3 can equal whatever it wants. x1 will equal 9 minus x3, and x2 will equal 40 minus x3. So if I choose, I don't know, maybe x3 equals 1, that would be probably a, a pretty easy choice to make. Um, if x3 equals 1, then I'm proposing that m multiplied by the vector, okay, x3 is 1, so 9 minus 1 is 8, 40 minus 1 is 39, and x3 is 1. If we think about this in terms of like a combination of the columns, well, 8 of the first column and 39 of the second column would give me 8 and 39, and then 1 of the third column would be give me 9 and 40. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. And so that's what we've got here. Um, in general, the, com or the, the kind of thing to look out for, big thanks to the student in my class this year, was if the rows are linearly independent, then the range fills up all of our whatever. And that was, a, that was a really good one. Um, and if we see that every row has a pivot, okay, that would be the same thing. Um, then we would see that the range is going to fill up all of, in this case, R2. Right, now this third one I've got has a column of all zeros. Um, and it's tall. And I think, you know, my idea is if we're thinking about this as all possible combinations of the columns, well, then it'll be pretty easy to say, okay, well, any combination of 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0 is actually just, you know, some multiple of 1, 1, 1. Okay, so that's what I'm expecting to find later. But I kind of the message here, I think, is that this column of all zeros isn't actually impacting the range at all. It's not adding anything new. It's not subtracting anything. So if I wanted to compute the range, and I've augmented m with an arbitrary vector y, that's going to be 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, and I'm augmenting with y1, y2, and y3 because this range is going to live inside of r3. Oh, uh, pardon me, I messed up there. I go to row reduce, I'm just going to subtract one copy of row 1 from row 2 and one copy of row 1 from row 3. So I'll have 1, 0, y1. 0, 0, y2 minus y1, and 0, 0, y3 minus y1. You know, I have two all zero rows, so I'm going to have two conditions. Conditions come from the all zero rows. Otherwise, we'd have, you know, an inconsistent system or no solution. Or y1, y2, y3 would not be in the range of m. This is what we're going to do. We're going to kind of translate each row, uh, each zero row into an equation. y2 minus y1 equals zero. And also y3 minus y1 equals 0. So that means I could solve for y2 and y3 in terms of y1, and maybe y1's my independent variable here. Just make it too hard on yourself. So y1 can be whatever it wants. y2 equals y1, and y3 is also equal to y1. And, and so, wait a second. I thought, yeah, no, 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 yeah, actually, okay. I thought I was going to have, need to have two independent variables, but I'm not. And so I'm going to say that the range of m is the set of all vectors y in R3 such that y1 equals y2 is also equal to y3. That's kind of what we expected from the start, thinking about all the combinations of the columns. 
right now. The last example I've got for you is kind of like the first one and kind of like the most recent one too. Um, I've got a wide matrix, but I can see clearly I've got some dependency in the columns. I've got a vector of all zeros. That's, again, I'm really suggesting this is not going to impact the range. Um, and I've got one, three, and two, six. The, the second one's a multiple of the first. So I'm going to say, all right, well, um, if I augment M with Y and row reduce, yeah, I think I can you know, mentally do this. One, zero, I'm going to subtract three copies of row one from row two. And so I'll say, all right, well, I had y1 and y2, but then I subtracted three copies of row one. Is that still in my shot? Yes. Okay, and so now I'm going to say, okay, well, y2 minus 3y1 needs to equal zero. y2 is three times y1. Okay, we already knew that from these. And if you think about it, had we not had this column of zeros there, we would have row reduced the exact same way, right? We would have taken row three and subtracted, or row two and subtracted three of row one. And so this column of zeros didn't really add anything to the computation here. Okay. It really had to do with, uh, you know, how many pivots did I have out of these non-zero numbers? Okay. And I only had one, um, so I'm going to have kind of a limited range. Had I had both pivots, it would have ranged all of R2. Okay, so I'm having y2 minus 2 times y1 equaling 0, so the, the range of m is equal to the set of all y's in R2, such that y2 is 3y1. I, I copied that down wrong. Okay, but I thought it just in time. All right, now I think at this point, you know, you need to go forward and compute some ranges on maybe some slightly more advanced matrices, but I think that this is exactly the background info you need, you know, I'm trying to get the definition on screen all at the same time. Uh, but that's going to be all for this video. Thanks for watching.